This is Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. On today's program, I'll be sharing a message titled, God's Shortlist. The Lord calls men and women into ministry, yet it is up to them to develop the call that He has placed upon their lives. The calling comes from God, yet the consecration to the call comes from us. Join me for part five of the message, God's Shortlist. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. Uh, just recently, I was out somewhere. I was out, and I thought, Lord, use somebody to reach that person. It was like the Lord was saying, yeah, you're the one. And I knew it was like, yeah, I went and got something and gave it to them. Gave them a Bible. Tell you what it was. We were in Silverton, Colorado. You ever been to Silverton, Colorado? It's like taking your clock and throwing it 100 years backwards, okay? And we're in Silverton, Colorado. And I'm sitting there at the table, and there's a young man that comes up and serves us at this restaurant. Now, he had an accent. He's about six foot five and looked from Europe. And I said, where are you from? He said, well, I'm from Lithuania. I said, really? So, of course, then while he's going back to get the food, I'm Googling Lithuania. And I found out the most popular food there. When he come back to take my order, I said, I'll take some of this. I'm trying to build a bridge, right? I'm trying to somewhere or another connect with him. Of course, I mispronounced it, and he didn't have a clue what I was talking about. But anyway, I tried. And then I'm sitting there and I'm going, Lord, just reach this fella. Reach him, Lord. Reach him. And I'm thinking, well, I'm the one that's got a heart for him. I'm the one that cares about this guy. Maybe I need to reach him. I'm thinking, how am I going to reach him? I didn't have any tracks with me. And I thought, well, I got a little Bible out in my car. So I excused myself. I went out and I got a Bible. Then in the course of time, I said, what are you here for? He said, well, I'm here learning the English language. I came over here, I think, for six months to learn the English language. So I'm going to work for part of it, and I'm going to travel for part of it. Well, I pulled the Bible out. I said, here's the Bible. That's the most popular book in the world, and it's in English, and it would help you if you could read this. I heard a guy say this one time. He's in the Navy, and he said, somebody gave him a Bible, and it was, he was a World War II veteran. He said, somebody gave me a Bible, and they said the punctuation is perfect. He said, well, I need help on my punctuation. <laughs> so he started reading the Bible just to work on his punctuation, but he got saved, all right? I mean, he started serving the Lord. So I said, well, here's the Bible, man. I gave him the book of Proverbs. I opened it up to Proverbs. I said, you want to read the Bible? Now, why am I saying that to you? We want to outsource everything. We want to say, Lord, use this person to reach them. Use somebody else, Lord. And the Lord's going, they're right in front of you. You're the one that has a burden for them. You're the one that's intersected their life. Use your voice. I'm going to put my words in your mouth. You speak my word to them. So anyway, he made the short list. Church, you're on the short list. Oh, uh, Pastor, I want God to use somebody out there. And while you're pointing out there, you got, what, three fingers pointing right back at you. And the Lord's saying, no, I opened the door for you. And so you need to be faithful. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, there were a lot of Babylonians. And there were a lot of Israelites that were in Babylon. And these were the elect, these were the cream of the crop of the Israelite people that are taken into captivity because he wanted people that would serve in the king's court. And he wanted them to be sharp, to be full of ability, to be wise and educated. They picked the cream of the crop out of Israel. But even the cream of the crop, everybody bowed down to the image except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's a picture of the short list. Even among God's people sometimes. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Not everybody that says, I'm a church member, is living for God. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of God. God has a remnant, and God wants us to be those people that even if church people are bowing, even if the people that know better are not doing the right thing, Lord, help me to be like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Help me to go ahead and stand. Help me to be like Daniel. He was the only one. And so, you know, that's it. Now, I'm going to give you a couple more examples, then we're going to wrap up. We have the Gospel of Luke. Jesus chose disciples. 
And it says, in these days he went out to the mountain. This is verse 12 of Luke chapter 6. In these days he went out to the mountain to pray. And all night he continued in prayer to God. So here you have Jesus praying all night. Why? It's an important decision. He's about to determine who he's going to surround himself with. And can I tell you, you need to pray before you make a decision about who you're going to surround yourself with. He's making a decision on who's going to be on the short list. Who is it that I really need to pour my life into? And so he's having this time of prayer. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose for them 12 whom he named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter and Andrew, his brother, and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew. These are the people that of all the people Jesus interacted with, these are the people he said, these will be my disciples. A disciple means a learner. These will be the people I pour myself into. And can I tell you, when you look at some of these names, Peter, we wouldn't say he would have made the cut in a lot of circles. Andrew, James, and John, these are the guys that wanted to call fire down from heaven. They're not receiving the message real well. Jesus, you want us to call down fire from heaven and destroy them? Philip, Bartholomew, it goes through this list of Matthew, he's a tax collector. Thomas, who we know is doubting Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Notice that, became a traitor. Somebody said, oh, he was rotten from the beginning. No, he became a traitor. And somebody said, well, Jesus, he was spot on 11 out of 12. He was spot on. No, Jesus was spot on 12 out of 12, but people have free will. People have choices they make, and Judas had a free will. God did not rig his will contrary to serving God in opposition to doing the will of God. Okay, I'm going to read a couple more, and we're going to quit here. Why am I saying this to you? Why don't we all aspire to being on that list that, Lord, if you need somebody, I'm available. If you need somebody to help get your work done on the earth, I'm interested in helping you get your work done on the earth. Well, pastor, I got stuff I need to do. Okay, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you, the laborers are few. Jesus said that. And we want to say, Lord, if you need some help, I just want to help you. And here's what I discovered that's beautiful. If you'll help God with his mission, he will help you with your mission in life. If you'll take care of things that are special to his heart, he's going to take care of things that are special in your life. So notice Acts chapter 6 and verse number 1. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists. So you got some people that they're all living in the land of Israel, but some of them can speak Aramaic and some of them can't. Some of them are speaking Greek. So they all identify with the faith. They all know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But some of them, they're different groups here. And so you had some of them that are Greek-speaking, some of them Aramaic-speaking because the widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. Evidently, you had a lot of widows in the New Testament. I think that's interesting. And then it says, And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. So pick out seven people. You got hundreds. You got thousands. We need seven. And here's the criteria. Good repute, good name, good character, honest full of the spirit, full of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. You say, Pastor, what kind of duty is it? What are they doing? Are they dealing in high finance? They're feeding the widows. Did you know God even wants the cream of the crop for anything that's involved in his work? You know, in the church work, you know what we do? We just want to say, we need some help. Everybody that has a pulse, come on up here and we'll turn you loose. That wasn't the way it is in the early church. They had an expectation. There were criteria. There were certain things that you need to meet in order to serve. We would give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of the Holy Spirit, full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles. 
And they prayed, and they laid their hands on them. And the word of the Lord continued to increase. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. So these were the ones that they were saved. They knew the Lord. There were multitudes of people saved. But there was something in these men. They said, there's character in them. There's the right spirit in them. There's something different. Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit than the other that went out because they were people of faith. They had a spirit of faith about them. Okay, here's the final thing I want to read. Okay, Acts chapter 16. Okay, most of you are familiar with Timothy, right? Timothy was the one that Paul wrote, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy 2. He was a pastor. He was used, most people believe he was a pastor at Ephesus, which was a significant work that Paul spent extended portion of his life poured into the city of Ephesus more than any other city. And so here he's turning over the pastorate of that to a young man named Timothy. I think it's interesting. Timothy was on Paul's short list. Notice this. Paul came also to Derby and Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. Notice verse 2. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. And as they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. The thing that touches me about this story, and I'm wrapping up here, Timothy Verse 2 was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. We wouldn't say he was unknown. Nobody, who, who is Timothy? I don't never heard of that guy. He was known among that church. He was well spoken of. He made Paul's short list because people that knew him knew he had a good name. So when Paul needed somebody, he said, okay, let's choose Timothy. Now, here's my quote. Are you ready for this? D.L. Moody. God doesn't seek for golden vessels. He doesn't ask for silver ones, but he does ask for clean ones. So tonight you may say, oh, pastor, you know, I don't have silver pipes. Well, maybe he doesn't need silver pipes. He just needs some clean pipes. Oh, pastor, I'm not the most articulate I don't know all the Bible. Do you know John 3.16? Oh, yeah, I know John 3.16. Okay, half the world has never heard John 3.16. And if they've heard it, they don't understand what it means. I use the illustration of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Remember, the Israelites were in Babylonian captivity, and whenever they made this stature, everybody bowed. I'm talking about all the Israelite people. They're all bowing down, and these are the cream of the crop bowing down, except three people. They were in that short list. And my desire would be, Lord, help us to realize nothing is more important than God, His work. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of Him that sent me. Thanks for joining me today. Fulfilling the call of God upon your life is so vitally important. Someone's eternity is connected to your calling. It's the Lord who calls us. However, it is up to us to develop the call that He has entrusted to our care. The gifts and the callings of God are nurtured and developed as we remain faithful to the Lord. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.